Now, now you got me thinking. It's a good question I want to ask you. What's up? Let, let's say Earl Spence loses. What should he do next? What's next for him? And let's say if Terrence Crawford lost against Earl Spence or, or Uga in the in the in the undisputed matchup, what's next for him and what's the best steps for him as far as his career? Well, if Earl Spence lose, I'm trying to get back and win those sanctioned bodies and try to get right back in the mix, which he'll, he'll be able to do because he's been reigning champion for a while now. So he'll be able to hop right back in the mix ASAP. I don't see him having to take a, a mandatory route, not a mandatory route, but like a gatekeeper's route. I don't see him having to fight boots for it. But if he wanted to make a splash, he'll fight boots or uh, Ortiz and take their spot from them, in my opinion. Or he can go the easier route and fight for the uh, the WBO belt. Which has, I think it has a, I forgot the mandatory name, but he's a less known mandatory for Crawford's belt. So he could go that route and try to try to get the WBO belt uh, mandatory spot. That way he don't have to fight the bigger names. Matter of fact, Ortiz is uh, Ortiz done the more right for the WBO. Mm-hmm. So he will have to fight Ortiz or uh, uh, Boots for one of those spots. Um, yeah, but I, I think Al Heyman's smarter than that, man. I think Al Heyman will have some type of rematch clause in that. In that, as far as the question where Crawford goes, if Ugas beats Crawford. Um, I think Crawford would have to play the, the uh, gatekeeper's role because I don't see Spence fighting him for no titles, to be honest. To be to be thoroughly honest, so only way I see him getting back in the mix, will he he will have to do what he's been doing the whole time. He will have to tr- prove himself at welterweight, which is what everybody been demanding him to do. No matter who he fights at welterweight, they're gonna tell him to prove himself at welterweight. I have a question for you since you asked me that question. Since we asked the tough questions, if Ugas does get 50-50, would you would you as an Earl Spence fan? Finally, you can see that Earl Spence ducked that fight earlier by giving Ugas 50-50 now, where he could have gave Spence 50, uh, Bud 50-50 early. Would you concede that it was a duck move, or would you say it was just the uh, business at, the business of boxing, per se? It it depends, and I, I'm, I'm going to answer it like this. If he gives Ugas 50%, and this is a big if, if he, if he and a lot of times, like I said, Al Heyman is slick because he don't let you know all the, the ins and outs of the deal. And if he gave Ugas 50% on the back end too, then you got to give Terrence Crawford 50%. You have to. You can't You can't say that Ter- uh, Ugas is a bigger fighter than Terrence Crawford because the money you would make with Terrence Crawford would be two times more. So if you gave him 50%, then you have to give him 50%. But a lot of people don't understand. A lot of times, uh, Al Heyman especially, he gives fighters a set fee. And so it, him and Ugas might get $5 million a piece. But on the back end, it may be 70% to 30, depending on pay-per-view sales. So, you know, that, that can make the difference up. So I don't know. But if it's just 50 all the way through, there's no way uh, Spence can justify not giving Terrence Crawford that 50%. Would it, would it not be justified in the future, or would it have been not justified across the whole board? Oh, yeah. Like- in, in, in the past, yeah, in the past. only thing that would save Spence to me somewhat is he doing what he said he was going to do. He said, let me clean up my side of the street, get these belts, with these guys from PBC, which is easier fights to make. And once I get them out of the way, our fight will be bigger, which it is huge right now. And we will have no choice but to negotiate and make this fight happen because there won't be nothing else for them to do. Both of them are, like you said, is running out of opponents. There's nothing else. There's nowhere for either one of those fighters to run. It's the biggest fight. It's the most money. It's, it's the most challenging fight. It's for all the belt, and it's for undisputed. Where else do you need to run and go? So that's the only way he can kind of get around that. He can say, well, I said I am going to knock out everybody first. I mean, beat everybody first and then come back to Terrence Crawford. But other than that, if you just take that out of it, it would, it would seem like a duck because if, if, if the hold up was the 50% or the split and you get Ugas 50%, then it's like you could have you already made that fight. So, yeah, it, it, it's both ways. Yeah. Well, I was just curious, man. This was a good topic, man. I, just, I was just curious on why the fans are not in such an uproar when it comes to negotiating for this fight. But I kind of agree with you. I just think it's, it's Al Heyman's uh, at hand. Everybody has confidence in Al Heyman. Nobody really had confidence in Bob Burham. So I'm just, I'm just, that's the reason why I believe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the Boston fan uh, the benefit of the doubt. I know some casual Boston fans just want to argue and, and want to be in the chat room arguing about something, but I'm gonna give the, the real Boston fans the benefit of the doubt. Like like my boy Mon here, he's been he's been guilty of following the purse splits heavily. I would say more than I would like, more than I would follow the uh, purse splits. So I, I know why he followed it. Like I said, he just followed it because he didn't have the utmost confidence in Bob Arum. So that's that's what it, that's what I believe it was. But with that being said, man, you got anything else you want to add to this topic real quick? No, I think we covered it all. But I'm gonna just say it's 2022. And this year we're speaking stuff into existence. I mean, in your life, 
and anything else, and we're gonna speak this fight into existence. Uh -huh. right, this fight gonna happen in the fall. I believe it's gonna happen in the fall, and Chin Tuck Box is gonna be there. So hey, everybody, just be patient and let's get this uh, unification fight out of the way. And if uh, Bud wanna have a tune up or something, this this stay shot. And then after that, I believe we're gonna have that made that mega fight in the fall of 2022. So just be patient. Most definitely, most definitely. With that being said, man, let's, let us know in the comment section what you think about it. Uh, I'm your boy Jay Slay, man. It's been CTB. Cut him out of here, man. All right, everybody. Remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification button, comment. You know why? Because we love boxing and you love boxing. But most of all, God, peace and love, and we out of here. Peace.